it's, it's the boiling frog problem, right? You just keep thinking it's all going to work out. And then you realize, wait a minute, why am I paying, you know, $18 for a hamburger? And, and why is gasoline costing $4 a gallon? And why is that plane ticket costing $700 instead of $300? That's because your money isn't as good as it used to be because they had to print more of it to fund these deficits. The U.S. Federal Reserve made a major statement last Wednesday on the Bank Term Financial Program, BTFP, a vital financial lifeline that was first formed after the regional banking crisis last year. This announcement marked a turning point in the ever-changing world of global finance. While the circumstances that precipitated the first phase of the crisis remained, the decision put an end to rumors about the program's extension. Remarkably, the Federal Reserve not only announced that the BTFP would end as planned in March, but it also went ahead and raised interest rates on new loans until the end of the program. The interest rate on new loans is now set to match the interest rate on reserve amounts on the day of the loan, which has significant ramifications since it would boost borrowing costs by about 50 basis points. Experts predict that these high rates will deter new loans, therefore ending a once favorable and lucrative arbitrage opportunity for lenders. But in the midst of this financial panorama, an opposing viewpoint surfaces. Hedge fund manager and well-known investor Mark Yusko advises against the Federal Reserve's decision to stop supporting. According to USCO, the United States passed a turning point last year, analogous to what happened to Japan when it decided to stop quantitative easing in March of 2006. USCO asserts that the economy can no longer run itself without monetary intervention, and that the Federal Reserve is at a turning point where innovative actions are necessary. In this video, we explore Mark Yusko's perceptive viewpoint as he discusses his forecasts and cautions on the actions of the Federal Reserve. Come along as we we break down the complexities of the current financial scene and consider the possible effects of the Federal Reserve's actions on the larger economic picture, all while presenting you with excerpts from Yusko's most recent interview with BlockWorks Macro. Let's hear what Mark Yusko is about to say. I thought this temporary program would, would have to be permanent. You know, look, we are going to re-enter QE. That, that's coming. You know, QT is over. They're going to go. This was a stealth way of doing QE. Well, this is not QE. We're just lending these banks some money temporarily while their assets accrete back to par because these are money good, right? The government's not going to default because the government can just go print more money. It's like the old Doritos commercial, crunch all you want, you know, we'll make more. And I think the problem that I see here is 30% of bank equity. And, you know, we had, was it Jim? Yeah, somebody, somebody we had on, on the show last year, who had the great chart of bank balance sheets. And it yeah. had the green as the assets and the red as the liabilities and the gold was the equity. And you know, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. That's how accounting works. Well, the problem is if you bought these assets and they became impaired because you, you bought them at low interest rates and interest rates rose and now there's an impairment, the way the accounting works is those unrealized losses are part of equity. But if they're losses, then shouldn't they detract from the equity value? But the, the thought is, well, but they're not real losses. They're just unrealized because they're going to be money good. And that's somewhat compelling as long as there's not a bank run, right? Because the, the challenge for all of banking, fractions are banking and, you know, Caitlin and others rail against this all the time, is functionally bankrupt. It's a bankrupt business model. Right? If everybody showed up to the bank and said, I want my money, you couldn't satisfy the demand and the bank would, would be out of business. And so time is your ally. It's like the opposite of, of the Maverick scene, right? Time is your greatest enemy. Time is your ally. Because if, if you can be given time to not have to pay out the depositors or that's why you shut your doors or or to do a bank holiday. But I, I so long-winded way of saying, I didn't expect them to stop this. But what, what we did see is the bank balance sheet, the, Q, the uh, Fed balance sheet ticked back up. So they were actually reducing the balance sheet like he said he was going to a year ago, and that's over. There was a tweet going around yesterday on Twitter about uh, Ray Dalio talking about this, that functionally what happens when a currency starts to devalue is government essentially has to go print a bunch of money in the central banking facility and buy up all of the excess bonds. And you know, you've been talking about this for a while with, with this wild 
deficit spending. You know, everybody was celebrating yesterday, you know, the great GDP number in Q4. Like, sure, give me half a trillion dollars. I'll show you a good time too. $500 billion spent in Q4 that we didn't have. Yeah, you can make GDP look really nice. So fiscal illusion is similar to monetary illusion. And 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 it's, it's the boiling frog problem, right? You just keep thinking it's all going to work out. And then you realize, wait a minute, why am I paying, you know, $18 for a hamburger? And, and why is gasoline costing $4 a gallon? And why is that plane ticket costing $700 instead of $300? That's because your money isn't as good as it used to be because they had to print more of it to fund these deficits. Mark Yusko expresses concerns in the speech in the changing economic environment, highlighting the actions of the Federal Reserve and their effects on the banking industry. He notices a change from the original plan, which was supposed to be just temporary, to what appears to be a longer-term intervention that may involve going back to QE. Yusko suggests that the current measures, despite being denied as QE, are effectively a stealthy reintroduction of such policies. There is a critical analysis of how accounting methods approach unrealized loss and their influence on bank equity, with a focus on the probable impairment of bank assets owing to rising interest rates. Yusko highlights how important it is for banks to strike a careful balance between being a friend and an enemy, particularly when dealing with unexpected withdrawal demands. He talks about the idea of fiscal illusion and how governments must create money to counteract currency depreciation. He also warns that popular economic indicators might be deceiving because of deficit spending. Additionally, he draws a connection between currency devaluation and the tangible effects on everyday life such as escalating prices for goods and services. All things considered, Yusko's statements highlight his worries on the possible long-term effects of the present economic policies on the banking industry and the overall economy. Let's hear what he has to say next. There was an auction. It was bad. It wasn't failed. It wasn't a tail because those primary dealers have to buy no matter what. Um, but if you ranked it between, you know, four and and nine, it was a four. I mean, it was it was ugly. And so does that mean the end of the world? No. Does it mean that we are we're reaching a point that is again unsustainable? Yeah. And and everyone's seen the, the chart. And I wish someone would fix the chart crime. You can't show a 40, 50, 60 year chart in linear scale. You just can't do it. It's, it's so egregious. And what it shows is, you know, here's the interest on debt and then the expectations in the next three years, it goes totally vertical. No, because the difference from going from zero to a trillion is very different than going from one trillion to two trillion. It, it just is. And yes, that next trillion is a lot, but the percentage growth is is not the, not the same. And so they just, they just need to fix those charts. But... But things that can't happen won't happen, right? So if, if the, you know, we're at the point now where the interest expense as a percent of the budget is reaching the upper bound that it's never reached, that 21% level. So you so say, well, why won't it go to 30 or 40 or 50%? If rates are higher today and we got to refinance all this debt that was, you know, has zero rates or 1% rates and now it's got to refinance at four or five, then, then the interest rate is going to go beyond that. Nope. I mean, they'll they'll either, right, buy the bonds and retire them, right? Do some sort of debt jubilee. They'll, uh, they will lower interest rates, despite the fact that we don't need lower interest rates unless there's an emergency, but there is an emergency. So it's just a different kind of emergency. And in the death throes of empires, this is what happens. And we've been talking about this a lot. And and it doesn't happen over a month or a year. It happens over a reasonable period of time. Now, looking back in history, it seems like it was, you know, instantaneous, but it's not instantaneous. But I, I said, I've, I've been doing a little reading about Weimar. There are some scary similarities, very scary similarities to Weimar. And I'm not saying we're all going to have wheelbarrows of cash. I'm not there yet, but I, I there are, there are some scary similarities. There are. 
Mark Yusko talks about the ramifications of a recent auction, although it didn't fail, presented a number of difficulties, especially for the principal dealers who have to make the buy. While not necessarily indicating the end of the planet, he argues that this highlights an unsustainable trend. Yusko expresses dissatisfaction with how economic data is presented, critiquing in particular the use of graphics that understate the seriousness of the issue. He makes the case for more realistic representations, and contends that knowing the percentage rise in debt is essential to appreciating the seriousness of the problem. Regarding interest rates and the national budget, Yusko highlights a worrying trend in which the interest expenditure as a proportion of the budget is getting closer to all-time highs, and may perhaps surpass 21%. Given the necessity of refinancing debt at higher rates, he doubts that this proportion will rise much more. Yusko makes predictions about possible outcomes, such as the government issuing bonds, paying them off, or enacting a debt jubilee. Although there isn't a pressing need for lower interest rates right now, he says that they may be pursued in the event of a different sort of emergency. Yusko draws historical comparisons between the current state of affairs and the fall of civilizations, stressing that these changes take time to happen. Although he does not anticipate a scenario of hyperinflation with wheelbarrows of currency, he does note disconcerting parallels with past economic downturns, suggesting that difficult times may lie ahead. Until next time, happy investing.